Let's talk about modeling. High society, the coolest parties, lots of money and traveling the world. That's what most people imagine when I tell them that I'm a fashion model. But what does the fashion industry actually look like? Hey guys, my name's Oliver and I've been a fashion model for over seven years. And I recently came out of that to pursue my dream of becoming an artist and draw stuff like this. Today I want to share with you why I decided to quit and some things that are close to my heart. And for that I think I need to start from the beginning of my journey. Wait a minute, what? Away we go. My story as a model began when I was 18 years old. That was when I was scouted for a TV show called Austria's Next Top Model. To keep this part short, yes, I won the competition. And after that, it didn't take long until I booked my first big name job, a campaign for Versace. At that time, I really had high hopes that my life is going to improve significantly. Yep. Let me tell you, I had no clue what it actually meant to be a model. And that's also the reason why I want to talk about three specific things I wish I would have known beforehand. The traveling, the money, and of course the lifestyle of a model itself. After that, you will probably understand why I decided that it's not worth it anymore. So we all know, models travel a lot. But there are two different ways of traveling. There's the one you do for a specific job. It goes something like this. You're lucky enough to get booked for a job. You fly to the location, you spend a couple of days or a week working there. And that's basically it. It's without a doubt the best part about modeling. Jobs like this have allowed me to visit places like Peru and Bermuda. Although you usually don't have time to explore the area, it's still pretty awesome. But traveling as a model also has its downsides, believe it or not. It mostly consists of spending weeks or months in different cities, sharing tiny and often very dirty apartments with other models. So-called model apartments. While I've met some amazing people during that time, it doesn't take away from the fact that it can get really lonely. But now you might be thinking, at least you get paid a lot. Well, yes and no. Let's talk about money. You know, in this industry I've met a ton of other models. And everyone wants to make it big. But the sad truth is that almost all of them fail miserably and quit. And you know why? They mostly give up because, well, they are struggling to survive. Since getting paid as a model is kind of weird and different than what you might expect. For example, you don't get paid right away when the job's done. It can take months. And there have been cases where I've waited even over a year. While waiting, you still have a lot of expenses. You have to pay for flights and rent. And in cities like New York or London, this can get pretty expensive. Just so you can go on castings and hopefully get other jobs. Jobs that sometimes pay nothing at all. Yes. That's also a thing in this industry and it's not uncommon. Some jobs pay thousands of dollars while others pay nothing or close to nothing. That's also the reason why a lot of models have part-time jobs. And let's not forget about the cut the agencies get from every job you do. But how much do they actually take? Usually around 20 to 25% but some take up to 50%. And I think some take even more, but I'm not sure. So, while it was tough at times and quite the opposite of what I would call a reliable, consistent income, I was able to make it work for a few years. All thanks to the support of my family and my then girlfriend. They really helped me through some dark times. Because you should know that the lifestyle as a model isn't very fancy either. You have to understand that this industry is extremely competitive. Whilst also dealing with the financial pressure, there are hundreds and thousands of models applying for the same jobs. 
You can maybe compare that to an endless chain of job interviews. But instead of being judged on your skills or education, casting directors will do so on your height, your face, your body measurements, and of course the most important criteria of all, your social media following. It's no surprise that all of that often leads to low self-esteem, anxiety, body dysmorphia, and a lot more. I'm no exception. I, for example, developed an eating disorder. And just for comparison, this is me, how I looked before I started modeling, when I was 18 years old. I was told that I was too big to be a model and that I needed to lose weight, which in all fairness was true at that time. So I started to slim down. A lot. That's how I looked a couple of years into modeling from 80 kilograms down to 67 kilograms. Needless to say that I wasn't healthy and I wasn't happy either. But the saddest thing about this whole industry is definitely the sexual harassment. There are some photographers, designers and let's call them other industry professionals who sometimes take advantage of models, mostly inexperienced young models. I won't go into further detail about that, there are already a ton of horror stories out there. So forget about this glamorous fancy lifestyle you see on social media and magazines, because well, it's simply not true, at least for the majority working in this industry. Don't get me wrong here, I'm really thankful for the memories I made and the people I met, but it's just that the lows I had outweigh the highs by a lot. However. Before I decided to quit, two things happened, or forced to quit. First, I suddenly became allergic to bleaching my hair, which, if you take a look at my portfolio, kinda was my trademark. Basically, my whole skin turned red, itching all over my body, my throat and scalp started swelling, it was really bad. And it got so bad that it even became hard to breathe. So because I couldn't dye my hair anymore, the number of jobs I got dropped a lot. But to be honest with you, I was kind of glad that I couldn't bleach my hair anymore. Because over time, after bleaching my hair over and over and over again, it really got thin. And at some point I even started to lose hair. Second thing that happened, and you might have guessed it, the pandemic hit. So there I was, back in my parents' house, recently dumped by my girlfriend, with little to no perspective as to what I want to do with my life. I was depressed, anxious. That was definitely the darkest time that I've ever been through. But I knew, if I wanted to start something new, this was the best opportunity I'll ever get. I needed to accept that and start from zero. So I decided to pursue my dream from before I became a model. Originally, I wanted to become an artist, and I thought the odds can't be that much worse than becoming a successful fashion model. Talk about one pipe dream after another. So I grabbed a pencil and I was drawing for the first time in seven years. I put all my effort into this drawing and it sucked. I sucked. It was so bad. But you know what? I really started to enjoy drawing again. And that's something I didn't feel for a long time. Enjoyment! So I was wondering, is that it? Is that my passion? I wanted to find out. I knew to make this a full-time thing, I needed to get better. So I practiced every day because, well, I had the time anyway. And after practicing for months, doing courses and watching a ton of YouTube videos, I started to get better and I also started to be genuinely happy again. At that point, I knew this is it. I want to make this a reality. With my savings from modeling, I rented an apartment in Vienna and moved out of my parents' house. Again. And then I started to market myself on social media. So I gave TikTok a shot and posted the first drawing, which I was really proud of. I didn't expect much, but the response was amazing. 
because not only did they tell me if they liked what I made, they also let me know when they hated my stuff. And I loved that. It's just that this brutal honesty was kind of refreshing and just so not fake at all. And I feel like YouTube is a very similar place, if not more so. After some time, people even started to ask if they could buy my artworks or if I sell prints of them. This was the first time I felt some sense of achievement. But nope, I still can't live from art alone. I still have to work part-time to make ends meet, but you know what? I'm okay with that, because on the way I learned a ton of other skills like photography, videography, editing, and I fell in love with all of that. It's weird, but it kind of felt like the creative outlet I was always looking for. And I'm planning to teach myself all sorts of creative stuff. There's just so much I want to try out and explore. And actually, this is what this YouTube channel will be mainly about teaching myself creative stuff and hopefully mastering them. But probably not, probably I'll fail most of the time. And I'm really looking forward to it. So all said and done, will I ever model again? One day maybe, I'm not sure. It wasn't modeling itself that I hated. Standing in front of the camera and working on projects with other people, that's all things that I really enjoy but I think it's just an industry that I wasn't cut out for. In addition, I currently have other priorities that are far more fun and fulfilling. Although I don't make nearly as much as an artist as when I was modeling, it's been years since I've been as happy as I am now. The main purpose for this video isn't only to show you where I'm coming from, but also that it's okay to start from zero if that makes you happy. I know, it can be scary and it involves taking risks, but I think good things come from uncomfortable places. I really hope you could get something out of this video, and if not, well, thanks for listening anyway. See ya!